Yes, please have a seat so that everybody can see everything. Yeah, and thank you for you both giving me chances to ask <laughs> every time. Um, uh, Oleg, Vitaly, Oksana, Sasha, Igor, Vitaly, MC Kellerman. I, I am so grateful for you guys. I'm so proud. And Oleg, you are so brave. And we have to talk about human rights. And I think Eurovision has united Europe once more. And we all were brave. We were all united around Ukraine. And, you know, we all feel connected, all Ukrainians. We are kind and brave people. And those are, I feel like, my brothers and my sister. And the only, way, the only question I want to ask if I can hug you all. Я просто, я можу перекласти. Я хочу, щоб ви звучали також українська. Тут я дуже пишаюся вами всіма. І Олег, ти дуже хробрий, і ми повинні говорити про права людей. Тому я ношу цей костюм. І ми з вами відчуваємо цей біль. І я відчуваю вас, і я відчуваю, як ви всі мої брати, і як сам моя сестра. Єдине моє питання – це, що я хочу вас обняти. Все. Come on. Давайте всі так кучкою. So, first question from our virtual press room, I'm going to go for it, uh, from Eurofile Australia. What message do you have for the displaced Ukrainians who have been watching tonight's show from other countries across Europe and Australia? First of all, I want to bring і сказати велику подяку всім українцям, всій діаспорі, всім, хто голосували цього року за Україну на Євробаченні через те, що цей рік дуже важливий для України. І люба перемога у всіх аспектах дуже сильно важлива для України. Тому велика вам подяка. Слава Україні! Слава! First of all, I want to thank everybody, every Ukrainian, Ukrainian diaspora, and everyone around the world who voted for Ukraine and helped us bring this victory to Ukraine. The victory is very important for Ukraine, especially this year. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Glory to Ukraine. So next question. Yes, you, man. Third line. Yes, I say yes. First. So please switch off your mobile phones. Okay. It's JP from Radio International. It's going to be my final question of this Eurovision Song Contest. And I would, would like to start first to thank all the volunteers, the hosts of the press conferences, the Rai colleagues that made us feel welcome here in Turin. And now my, my congratulations go again to the Kalush Orchestra from Ukraine. Well done for the victory. Uh, and the question is, do you think that, that you voted for you because of the current situation of the war in your country? Or was it the song Stefania? Так, всі знають, що довший період ми були в першому місці по букмекерах, але до початку війни ми були на п'ятому місці, тому це свідчить про те, що все ж таки наша пісня дуже до подоби людям. І коли більше було чути про Україну загалом, тим більше її слухали пісню, і вона Заїдала всім. Мені реально було приємно слухати, коли я їздив в різних країнах і чув, як люди реально слухають. Тому е вважаємо, що пісня так і дуже сподобалась європейцям. І велика подяка кожному, хто за неї проголосував. 
Indeed, lately the song Stefania was number one according to the Eurovision odds, but even before the war broke out in Ukraine, it was in top five according to the bookmakers. And uh, lately I've really enjoyed uh, hearing this song all over Europe in different countries that we visited. It was so nice to hear this song playing everywhere. And we really want to say a big thank you to everyone who listened to our song and who voted for our song. Thank you. I have a question from the online press from Voice Mag UK. What do you hope your win represents to Europe and the global stage? Як я казав, люба перемога в любому аспекті для України зараз буде дуже вагомою, а так як наша Культура також під загрозою, то саме тут ми були через те, що на нашу культуру напали, і нам потрібно показати, яка вона є. Українська культура жива, вона є. Українська музика жива, і вона дуже цікава і має дуже красивий почерк. As I mentioned before, any victory is, many, is very meaningful uh, to Ukraine these days. And uh, uh, here, uh, lately, the um, Euro uh, Ukrainian culture has been attacked. Uh, attempts were made to attack Ukrainian culture. And we are here to prove that Ukrainian culture and Ukrainian music are alive. And they have their own very special and very beautiful signature. Thank you. Next question. You first. First come, first serve. Luciana Parisi, Rai, Rai 3, TG3. I would like to ask you if you received a phone call from the President Zelensky. And, uh, and how do you imagine your country that will host the Eurovision Song Contest in 2023? How could be? Thank you. Ні, у мене поки не було нагоди поспілкуватися з президентом особисто через те, що ви ж знаєте, яка в нас ситуація в Україні, і точно він дуже зайнятий зараз. На наступний рік, я думаю, що Україна з радістю прийме Євробачення в цілісній, розбудованій і щасливій Україні. I did not have... I did not have a chance to talk to President Zelensky yet. As you know, he's, has, he has other things to do. He's busy with other very important things, things these days. As to the Eurovision Song Contest, I'm sure that next year Ukraine will be happy to host Europe in the new integrated and happy Ukraine. Thank you. Next question is from Ava. Virtual press room. So Joy Piazza here from ABC News in the USA. The televote skyrocketed you into uh, first place, which led you your win. Uh, how do you feel about the amount of support from the public and what signal does the send to your countrymen? The ones who stayed in Ukraine, of course. Як я вже і говорив, що висловлюю велику подяку кожній країні, кожній людині з кожної країни, яка підтримала нас через те, що я надіюсь, ви розумієте, наскільки Україні зараз потрібна підтримка у всіх аспектах. І в Україні вже доволі таки довгий час не було хороших новин. І дякую всім, хто допомогли мені привести в Україну якісь хоча б хороші новини. I would once again like to say a big thank you to everyone from every country all over the world who voted for us. Uh, for us, this support is really important for Ukraine in these times, and uh, uh, we really appreciate that you helped us uh, with your votes. Thank you. Thank you. And now, yes, it's your turn. Hi, it's GJ from the Dutch Eurovision podcast, Ding -a Dong. Last year and this year, we see that Europe understands and appreciates Ukrainian culture. What can people who voted tonight themselves do to ensure that Ukrainian music and Ukrainian culture will continue to get created in these difficult times?
слухати українську музику, дивитися українські фільми, приїжджати в Україну. Багато чого можна. Реально, в нас є наша культура, яка дуже цікава. Навіть, якщо глянути на нас, ми просто беремо українську культуру, яка, можливо, цей фольклор забути через декілька поколінь і міксуємо з новим хіп-хопом. Таким чином це є цікаво. Але крім нас, є ще дуже багато цікавої української музики і у всіх аспектах культури і творчості є дуже багато талановитих людей. You can listen to Ukrainian music, watch Ukrainian films and visit Ukraine. Uh, for example, us uh, as the band, we mix Ukrainian culture, ancient folklore elements that have been forgotten through generations with modern sound. But apart from us, there are so many talented people in Ukraine doing music and every other aspect of creativity. So you can always follow them as well. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question from Martin Andersson, Sweden. What will you do when you go home? Are you going to go fight in the war? Ми маємо тимчасовий дозвіл на виїзд, і він закінчується післязавтра. Післязавтра ми якраз встигнемо добратися, будемо в Україні. Я не знаю, що я буду робити, так як я перший раз виграв Євробачення, але, звичайно, як і кожен українець, як дойде до того, то кожен з нас готовий боротися за свою країну до кінця. We have a temporary authorization to be here, and uh, it ends in two days. And uh, exactly in two days, we are going to be back to Ukraine. It's hard to say what exactly I'm going to do, because this is the first time I win Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, but anyway, um, like every Ukrainian, uh, we are ready to fight as much as we can and go until the end. Cool. Next question. Your turn. You can come. Hi, hello, hello, good evening. Szymon Stelmaszek, Radin Sleter, Poland. First of all, guys, congratulations a lot. Uh, Oleg, in two days you have birthday, right? 28. <laughs> yes, it is on the 16th of May. I'm impressed that you know this. So people, hey, let's sing them. Happy. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Oleg, happy birthday to you. Thank you so much, thank you. Listen, first of all, warm congratulations. I know Eurovision is about politics, is about politics and music and you won, people showed solidarity, but we could see also the difference in voting. Jury didn't support your song as much as the public vote. How you describe this difference? Why? Uh, no, знаєте. Все ж таки, це конкурс такий, коли потрібно через екран себе показати. Журі ж також через екран оцінювали. І от я бачу вживу і бачу, що на екрані багатьох конкурсантів і себе також. І я розумію, що воно все ж таки не співпадає, наскільки. Ну, мається на увазі, хтось себе краще передає через екран, а хтось себе краще передає вживу. Тому все ж таки дуже важко іменно отак себе подати. Тому от, напевне, що нам слід попрацювати було б ще над тим, як іменно себе подавати через екран. Um, it's always different when you see, when you perceive an artist live or through a screen. For example, both us and other contestants, we were doing it through the screen and the juries and televoters, they evaluated us through the screen. So probably we will work even more on, uh, our cre uh, on how we deliver um, musically so that uh, even the juries who watch us through the TV screen see, see us better. Thank you. Next question from the virtual press room for the 
uh, Polish television. What does it mean for you singing your song with the Polish singer Christian Ackman at the in a square of Turin? And second question is, would you call yourself soldier at the stage? Ми з ним знайшли дуже хороший коннект, і так прикольно з ним зробили мікс Стефанії. І також ми мали спільний перформанс у Варшаві. І мені подобається цей виконавець, клас. Взагалі хочу виразити ще раз велику подяку Польщі через те, що Польща підтримує у всіх аспектах Україну дуже сильно. Тому велика вам всім подяка. We did have a great connection with Christian uh, when we performed together, both uh, doing a mixture, our own kind of mixture, uh, mixed version of Stefania, and also when we performed together in Warsaw. Uh, in general, I would like to say big thank you to Poland that has been supporting Ukraine so much in all different aspects. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question from here. Yes, you. Hi, I'm Torbjörn Ek from Swedish newspaper Aftonbladet. Congratulations to all of you for this victory. Um, you have been telling us about worrying about everyone back home, your family, your friends, what will happen to them. How worried are you yourselves about going back home to the war? Моє переживання не закінчується тоді, коли я пересікаю кордон через те, що в мене в Україні всі мої рідні, близькі, знайомі, друзі і вообще всі люди, яких я знаю. Тому дуже багато близьких, за яких я переживаю. Так що воно якось не грає ролі, мається на увазі, що може навіть швидше і наоборот через те, що коли я з нами... В Україні я розумію, що, можливо, я швидше зможу якось повпливати, щоб когось захистити або якось так. Being worried doesn't end with my crossing the border. Because anyway, all my family, friends, close and loved ones are in Ukraine, no matter where I am. And sometimes it's even more comforting to be there together with them. Because this is what, how I can help them, because I'm next to them. Will you be able to celebrate your birthday with your mother, Stefania? На пане 16-го числа я буду в літаку, потім в машині, а потім в автобусі, тому тому наступного дня так, я хотілося б з мамою, дівчиною і ще з декількома суперблизькими людьми, з родиною. On the 16th uh, of May, I'm going to be traveling, first uh, having my flight, then traveling by car and by bus. Uh, but the next day after it, I will definitely spend time with my mother, my girlfriend, and my family, the people who are closest to me. Thank you. Next question from the virtual press room of Vesna Zujovic. Except you, which of our country deserved the victory, in your opinion? Мої фаворити були це Італія, Англія, е, також мені Польща подобалась і ще один. І ще хтось один секрет. Uh, my favorites were Italy, the United Kingdom, Poland and one another one. And Moldova. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next question from virtual. No, from here, I'm sorry. You what? You too. Uh, 
Hi, Kalush. Uh, congratulations. I'm Jens from LTV, LGBTQ plus channel in Europe. Uh, first of all, I want to say, no matter what people say, I think the best song has won. Uh, that for starters. Yeah, it is. Um, I have a question because at the end of your performance, you uh, mentioned, please help Ukraine and Azovstal. Um, can you please explain Europe, um, and especially Western Europe, why you said that and how we can help? So the situation of Azov, uh, Azovstal, please. Це велика наша біда нашої країни. Хто не знає, це остання блокада. Більше ніж тисячу людей оточили з усіх можливих боків, і вони не можуть ніяк вийти. Тому ми просимо вмішатися в якусь третю країну, щоб дати їм вихід. Говорити можна, як допомогти, це інформаційно. Говорити всім, писати про це. У вас вже тут багато преси. Якщо кожен про це з вас напише, то це точно, я думаю, нам допоможе. І стукати до влади ваших, вашої країни. Коротше, допомоги може бути багато. Тому просимо всіх звернути увагу на це. Це дуже важливо. Uh, we have big grief in Ukraine these days because uh, uh, people, our people are now blocked uh, by around 1,000 soldiers from all sides and they cannot go out from Azovstal. And we really need help to release these people. And what can be done to, to make this happen? Of course, information, spreading information, talking about this, trying to reach out your authorities, governments to help. So this is very important. There's so much press here. If at least uh, you write about this, it, then so much information will be spread. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying this. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Next question from uh, the Trail Press Room from GRP Television. What was the most exciting moment you experienced here in the street of Turin? Якщо чесно, було дуже стресово за рахунок того, що довше час в Україні нам навіть не було змоги разом зустрітися і нам приходили, е, приходилось репетирувати онлайн, тому ми зустрілись разом уже за день до виїзду в Турин, і, звичайно, що тут нам приходилось репетирувати в екстра режимі, і у нас не було навіть толком сильно змоги погуль... ну, типу, побачити місто через те, що реально у нас були правки там, по камерах, по е, постановці, е, репетиції, постійно там міняли одяг і так далі. Ми були дуже сильно сконцентровані на нашому виступу, через те, що ми розуміли, наскільки велика відповідальність на нас і на нас дивиться весь світ, Україна і всі, хто тільки можуть. Um, it's been quite stressful, to be honest, because um, for a very long time we did not have an opportunity even to come together to rehearse. That's why we could rehearse only online. And only after coming here in Turin, we could start rehearsing. And we worked all the time. We worked on rehearsals. We worked on our performance. We worked on all aspects of our performance, like our light camera work and so on. We tried to improve everything as much as we could because we understood how responsible it is for us to represent Ukraine now. Thank you. Next question from here. Yes, you, madam. Hello. Oh, congratulations. Uh, Caroline Onorian, Swiss Radio. You wrote a song for your mother, uh, Stefania, and I just want to know, have you had time to speak to your mother and what did she say? Думаю, показати вам повідомлення, ну ладно, не буду. Не було навіть часу подзвонити до мами, але ми переписувались з нею, і я попросив свою дівчину набрати до мами, бо в нас на годину ще більший час, і тіпо, їх вже треба спати. Е -е а завтра вже зранку наберу після оцього всього. 
I didn't have time to call her yet. I just texted her. I'm not going to show you the text itself, but uh, this is the way we could contact so far. And I also asked my girlfriend to give her a call. It's plus one hour there, so it's pretty late. That's why I decided that I will call her tomorrow morning after all of this. Thank you. Next question. Uh, oh, what she wrote to me is that she's really proud of me and she's very happy. Give her all the love from us in Europe. Bye. Thank you. So, okay. next question, Bernardo from Website e Festival PT. Congratulations. When you entered the Ukrainian selection, did you imagine getting this far? Uh, yeah. This is the reason why I went to Vidbir. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Vitao, congratulations, Kalush Orchestra, and to all of you, as you see, I. Vlasna uh... Shapka. <laughs> nice hat. Thank you. You gave it to me, so I'm very grateful for that. Um, first of all, I just want to point out that 439 televote points is the highest number of televote points any country has received ever in Eurovision. So a big hand to that. Class, <laughs> I'm very excited. And my question is actually, um, we have never seen rap music do very well in Eurovision. This is the first year that a rap song has won Eurovision and even in your native language. Um, how does that make you feel? And, and what did you feel to be able to rap in Ukrainian on the Eurovision stage? Я завжди говорив про те, що реп зараз хіп-хоп це мейнстрім номер один в світі, і чого його не має бути на Євробаченні. Тобто, мені здається, що через років там вісім будуть люди казати: Блін, ну не реп не може бути на Євробаченні, якби навряд таки може бути. Тому якби я і хочу бути оцим першопроходцем через те, що хіп-хоп номер один зараз в світі. Ви слідкуєте, ну, типу, якби. So реально важно. Um, rap hip hop music is mainstream number one on the on the world music stage, and um, I really um, believe that in like eight years, uh, people will be surprised that a non rap song uh, succeeds in the Eurovision Song Contest. So I'm no kind of pioneer. I do not want to be pioneer in this thing because hip hop music is already number one in the world. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next question from the venue. Yes, Yeoman. Hi, guys. Uh, Luigi Bolognini from La Repubblica, Italy. Two questions. The first, uh, uh, the words you said at the end of the song. Uh, weren't you scared that you could be sent off by the competition because of the prohibition of uh, political statements? And the second uh, question is, uh, if you already decided that the um, organization to which you will give the royalties of the song. Thank you. Stosovno uh, першого... Розумію, що питання на пане люди, які задають собі цим питанням, не розуміють, наскільки велика біда в нашій країні і наскільки це важливо. Це для мене точно все ж таки важливіше, ніж дискваліфікація чи що не буде. Я готов точно, але такий шанс я би собі не пробачив втратити. Я дуже надіюсь, що є хоч одна людина з 200 мільйонів, яка побачила, яка прийняла це до уваги і це можливо, чимось нам допоможуть. А стосовно другого питання про роль, я не зрозумів. Um, you must really understand what kind of huge 
problem, huge grief Ukraine is experiencing these days to understand why these things were said. Um, if uh, the price would be disqualification, I would ready to pay this price just to help people. And the second one, I didn't really understand what you meant about royalties. Thank you for all your questions. So far, it's now time to have here uh, the executive supervisor from EBU, please welcome to Martin Osterdal. Welcome. Martin. Hi. Hi, welcome. Good evening. Where shall I stand? Shall yes, I stand here? Of course. Wherever you want. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just first like to say. Um, that we have now completed the 66th Eurovision Song Contest, and it's an incredibly memorable one. Before I um, address the main heroes of the evening, um, I'd like to say a big thank you, because this is probably the last chance I get, to everyone here in Torino, at RAI, who have, for so long now, worked so incredibly hard to make this incredible show that you saw tonight happen. Uh, we've been in this venue for, I think, eight or nine weeks now, and there's so many great people here from the city, from the municipality, uh, from Rai, the host broadcaster, who has done an incredible job. So, first of all, give them a big hand. I thought that was amazing tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, what we saw tonight was a great show where... This whole week, we've done 12 shows, I think, this week. Uh, and with uh, artists from 40 countries who have really stood on the same stage, stood behind the unifying values of the Eurovision Song Contest. And I believe it was very powerful. So thank you to all 40 countries who participated as well. Kalos Orchestra and Ukraine, congratulations to this historic vic victory. Uh, you were, from the very beginning of this Eurovision Song Contest season, you were extraordinary, you were brave, you were courageous, and I have to say that you have impressed us, everyone who works with the Eurovision Song Contest, since the first step and all the way into the very end. We know this has been a very difficult time for you, of course, but, I mean, from, like I said, from the first moment until the last, you've been incredibly impressive you have um, really, really charmed us all. Uh, and I thank you for your hard work, for your patience, and congratulations to this uh, incredible, incredible win. Well done. <laughs> you might wonder what I'm holding in my hand. Uh, this is the uh, Eurovision Song Contest Welcome Pack. And it's my great honor, Oksana, um, we met the first time in Kiev in the autumn of 2016. I had just produced the uh, Eurovision Song Contest in Stockholm, where you also won. Um, and uh, we got to know each other. I know that you and your team knows what it takes and what it involves to uh, be the organizers of this great event. So it's my pleasure to give you this. It contains a lot of things that you already know. Uh, with contact de details to a lot of people that you also already know. Uh, but please know that you know where to find us. You know that we'll be with you all along the way. And we look forward to starting with this, perhaps not tomorrow, but uh, the day after. Congratulations. Thank you so Thank much you. to Mr. Martin Osterdal, Executive Supervisor from EBU. So, we can go on with our questions from uh, uh, Virtual Press Room. Okay, from Frankfurter Press. Were you at any moment worried that Russia might disturb the Eurovision Song Contest uh, or the voting? Так, а що так можна робити? Is it even possible? Uh, sorry? Is it even possible to do? Okay, thank you. Okay, next question. Uh, you first. I 
I'm from, hello, I'm from Variety. Um, Molodze. Um, I just wanted to ask, obviously we all hope that it will be in Ukraine next year. If that is not possible, do you have uh, someone that you would like to uh, host on your behalf? It's really too soon to talk about uh, these details. Of course, we will do everything possible to make the Eurovision Song Contest happen in the new peaceful Ukraine. Uh, next question from the bank. Yeah, yes, you, madam. Dobry wieczór. Yes, Polsi. Congratulations, Kalush. Uh, in behalf of all Polish media, Polish fans, you deserve this winning. We are very happy that you won. Uh, my question is, I noticed that you're on your uh, social media, you support a lot of... Uh, Ukrainian young artist, and my question is, what is so important to you, especially in this difficult time for Ukraine? Děkuji. V muzyčnej ukrajinskej sfere najważniejsze nie zupełnie i dzisno pisle wojny. Українська, українські музиканти, вони дуже часто об'єднуються, випускають пісні на різні актуальні теми і роблять все можливе для того, аби культура жила у всіх можливих іпостасях. Тому це, це для нас і є важливо. І звичайно, що ми підтримуємо молодих артистів. Наша ціль зробити так, щоб українська музика була популярна не тільки в Україні, але й у цілому світі. І Євробачення якраз це дуже хороша платформа для цього. Дякую вам. Uh, of course, uh, we uh, do everything possible to support young artists. And especially in these difficult times, uh, a lot of Ukrainian musicians and artists have united, and they always unite around important things. And uh, supporting young artists is very important because together we make Ukrainian music reach the international market, the international stage. And uh, this is very important. And the Eurovision Song Contest is a good platform to showcase this Ukrainian culture. Thank you so much. I think our time is over. So thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much to Kalush. Okay, Kalush, Kalush. Kalush. And